Rev. Rosemary Dawson, Interim Minister of the Athol Congregational Church. Welcome to Worship Online. First, I want to remind you that if you would like to make a prayer request for this online service, you may go to our website, our Facebook page, or call the office with your joy or concern. Our next takeout community meal will be June 5th. We will be serving kebabs, seasoned rice, pea, peas, and peach cobbler. Please call the office by June 2nd to make your reservations. It has been suggested to me that we have an online Bible study for the next few weeks. If you're interested in participating, please call or email me. Also, our congregation is celebrating our life as a church. Even during this time of COVID-19, we are living our faith and serving our community, whether by cooking, calling, shopping, sewing, praying, or preaching. We are the church, and so we are going to create an outdoor display of our church family. We ask that you make an 8.5 by 11 picture or collage or painting that tells your story. These will be laminated and then put in front of our church. You can put your name on it or not. It's up to you. You can each make one or put your family group together. Every time you drive near, you will see the people of our church together, held together in love and in the spirit of Christ as we are together being the church in our own special way. You may email the image of the church at accuccoffice at gmail.com or mail them to the Athol Congregational Church at 1225 Chestnut Street, Athol, 01331. Or leave them with Bonnie and Al Benjamin at 951 Pleasant Street, Athol. The bag is on the doorknob or beep and they will come out to you. You can also call Susan Bodridge at the church number 978 Two four nine six two zero two. If you have any questions, Sue will laminate the papers, and others will put them up. Also, the North Quabbin Veterans Outreach will hold its fourth annual Re We Remember public display during the month of May on the Uptown Commons in Athol. The display will honor those service members who have died. Individuals and organizations may make donations to remember and honor those who have served. The funds collected will support the annual Breakfast for Veterans and their families in our community near Veterans Day in November. The names will be listed in the Athol Daily News just before the annual free breakfast for the veterans and their families. Donations may be mailed to the Athol Congregational Church, 1225 Chestnut Street, Athol, 01331, with NQVO in the memo line. Let us now join together in worship. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please join us in our call to worship. Our united response will be, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Stir up your power within us. Listen for the sounds from heaven. Hear the rush of a mighty wind. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit come. come. Stir, Stir up your power within us. us. The Spirit ignites us with hope and courage. God sets us afire with grace and love. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Stir, stir up your power within us. Today, we are empowered as witnesses and servants of God. Let us boldly speak of the glory of Christ. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Stir, stir up your power within, within us. We lift our voices in praise to you, O oh God, as we turn toward you this morning. We believe you are with us even when we cannot sense you. We thank you for the times when you have revealed yourself to us. And we ask for one of those moments today. May we know your comforting presence and your guiding wisdom as we turn to you in prayer. May your spirit arouse us to deeper discipleship and greater service as we attend to your truth. And may we know your strengthening presence and faithful love as we follow and obey your son. We ask this in his name, praying as he taught us, our Father who art in heaven,
Hi kids, how's your week been? I have a question for you. How many of you have a pet? Well, as you can see, I have a pet too. This is Tucker, and I've had Tucker for several years now. And do you know what? I love Tucker a lot. Do you know how I show Tucker that I love him? Well, I feed him, <laughs> and I take him for walks, and I give him a bath, and I brush his coat, and I take him to the vet. But the most important way I show Tucker that I love him is that I spend time with him. Okay, great. Now, if I came over to your house and watched you and your pet together, how could I tell that you love your pet? What kind of things do you do to show your love? I bet you do a lot of the same things that I do. You know, it's important to remember that it isn't enough to say you love your pet Love isn't something you say. Love is something you do. It's the way you act towards someone or something. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you love Jesus? How does Jesus know that you love him? How can you show Jesus that you love him? That's a hard question, isn't it? In today's gospel lesson, Jesus gives the disciples an answer to that question. Jesus said, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones that love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them. It isn't enough just to say that we love Jesus. Instead, we have to show love, God our love by doing the right things, just like you show your love to your pets and your parents and your friends. So what are the, some of the things that we can do to show our love for Jesus? Well, the Bible is a good place to find that answer. And here are some ideas. You can love God by worshiping God, talking to God in prayer, reading God's word in the Bible, telling others about Jesus, helping those in need, and most important of all, loving one another. Maybe you can think of some more, and maybe this week you can do one of them as a way to show, your, show Jesus how much you love him. Let's pray. Father God, we're quick to say to you that we love you, but we know that we need to show our love to you too. Help us to show you our love, just as you show your love for us. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from John chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of God. Amen. This week, when Greg and I were hanging out after a long day, both inertly sitting on the couch and staring at the tube, he asked me, Rosemary, do you love me? Now after 30 plus years of marriage, I knew what he was asking, so I replied, what do you want? Could you make me some tea? Well, I made him the tea, but only because I wanted some too. It's amazing, isn't it? How those we love the most can use the expressions of love to get what they want. We've probably all experienced this dialogue of love, of love in some form or another. To me, that interaction seems so common and so universal that it really shouldn't come as a surprise when we read this morning's gospel lesson. Jesus turns to his disciples and simply says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And at face value, we might roll our eyes and say, Oh, Jesus, 
You too. Do you love me? Good. Well then, keep my commandments. But Jesus is not approaching us from the perspective of quid pro quo. He's not saying, if you want something from me, then I want something from you. Rather, love and obedience are inextricably tied together. You simply cannot have one without the other. Jesus always confronts us with the truth that what we say must be met by what we do. It's called integrity. And as Christians, we need to be integritous. If we claim to love Christ, then we have to act like it. If we claim to follow Christ, we must do as he has done. If we claim to be children of God through Christ, then we have to live out God's character. So when Jesus says, if you love me, he's not making a threat, he's stating a fact. And the fact is, we do love him, and so we must live like we mean it. If you love me, keep my commandments. But as clear as Jesus' call is, it does not tell us what he wants. Keep my commandments is a pretty broad category. What commandments is he referring to? Which would you pick? Go make disciples? Be holy as God is holy? Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and visit the sick? When Jesus was asked to choose, this was his answer. This is the first and greatest commandment. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I believe this is exactly what Jesus had in mind when he said, if you love me. Because just before and just after this passage, he says, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you. And this is my commandment, that you love one another, as I have loved you. Three times now, Jesus has commanded us to love. And the reason for such a command is that genuine love, love like Jesus lived, is no easy thing. Frederick Buechner, a modern theologian, points out this reality in one of his writings. He said, in the Christian sense, love is not primarily an, emo an emotion, but an act of the will. When Jesus tells us to love our neighbors, he's not telling us to love them in the sense of responding to them with a cozy emotional feeling. On the contrary, he's telling us to love our neighbors in the sense of working for their well-being, even if it means sacrificing our own well-being. Loving as Christ has loved, giving ourselves fully and graciously to the welfare of another is not easy, but then it's not supposed to be easy. In fact, it's not even really possible. It is a command no person can do under their own ability. But the good news is that God does not expect it, us to do it on our own. Immediately after this, his statement, if you love me, you will keep my commandments, Jesus gives us a promise to meet his call. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another companion to be with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. Jesus' promise to his disciples is simply this, as God was in me, so shall I now be in you, carrying out the work of divine love. Specifically, as the Spirit of God was in Christ, so the Spirit of Christ is now in us, teaching us, guiding us, empowering us, equipping us in our walk with God. The Spirit is with us in this labor of love. The Spirit is the one who comes alongside us who walks with us in this life, who will stand by our side and provide all we need to help us live out our love for Christ as Christ himself commands us. And that is, any, and that is all anyone would ever need to bring love into action and to carry on the divine work that Christ has given us. Before his death, Jesus asked his disciples, do you love me? Today, he asked that question of each of us. Do you love me? Yes, Lord, of course we love you. Good, Jesus says, then keep my commandments. How might you answer Jesus' question and call today? Amen.
together in prayer. We worship you, O God, for the overflowing love you grant to us each day. In Jesus Christ, you have revealed your love to a broken world. Through your Holy Spirit, you embody his love in, in us to transform your world. And so we come to you now, O God, seeking the power to live as the human face of your love today, in worship, in witness, and in service to you. We pray for your church and for this congregation. May we experience the joy of your love for us, and may we freely and joyfully share that love in actions that will reflect the goodness of Christ to all the world. We pray for our world. May its leaders know your presence, guidance, and compassion as they seek to care for the needs of all people and to establish peace and justice among the nations. And we pray for all who are suffering today. Grant your love to the forsaken, your joy to the despondent, and your hope to the discouraged. Grant also your healing to the sick, your comfort to the mourning, and your provision to the needy. We pray for the continuing support of those dealing with the coronavirus, for medical caregivers and researchers, patients and families, community workers and leaders. And we pray for all who are dealing with the extended effects of the pandemic, for the needy and the overworked, the lonely and the anxious. We also pray for all who are leading us in reopening our communities. Grant them wisdom, courage, and patience as they strive to do what is best for all people. We now lift up the needs of Larry and Tom and all our members and friends as we come before you in the quiet of our hearts. We praise you, glorious God, for your faithfulness, love, and presence in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ has come among us, offering us the abundant blessings of God. Now we have the opportunity to express our thanks for all his mercies and to answer his call to, real, to reveal God's love to the world. Let us give with joy. We would prefer that you send your offerings by check to the church office, but it's also possible for you to give through PayPal or through your bank's bill pay service. You may go to our website for more information. Let us now join together in our offertory prayer. With these gifts, we acknowledge your goodness and mercy, O God, and we reach out to our neighbors with words of love and acts of grace. May your spirit be present in all we do for your glory. Amen. Go now into the world and may the amazing grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, and the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. Thank you.